Big Bad Brew uh, started a few years ago uh, when I realized there was a gap in the market for culturally rich content for children. So um, my husband and I partnered with a gentleman by the name of Dustin Ellis to do a direct-to-DVD um, cartoon uh, similar to the Charlie Brown Christmas special. Okay. And we call that DVD, Bobak and Friends, A First No Ruse. And the idea with that DVD was to teach kids about the Persian holiday uh, of Nowruz. It was a half hour DVD, we produced it in English and in Persian and we used um, very famous uh, voiceover artists to do the show. Uh, and it was a small sort of side venture that we had both uh, stepped into. Uh, that did really well, Bobak and Friends did very well. Uh, we screened it in over 40 museums um, yeah. across the world and showed it in Apple stores and um, Based on that, we realized that there was a big gap in the market for culturally rich content for immigrant families. So that if you're an immigrant living in North America, how do you hold on to your culture and to your language and teach those traditions to children? And out of that came the idea of mixed nuts, which is, we like to say, the peanuts for international children. It's a show about four kids that are from four different countries and their daily adventures in school and at home. Bobak is a boy from Iran. Uh, we have Damaris from Cuba, we have Jay who's Korean, and Sanjay who's Indian, um, and all the things that they go through. Uh, as an example, we have Jay's grandfather coming to visit from Korea, and in that episode, um, they sort of go head to head. Uh, they have a language barrier, they have a generational barrier, uh, and we explore those issues in a really fun way. Um, and Mixed Nuts is going on PBS uh, later this year. We believed really strongly in the social value of what we wanted to bring. We felt that um, major stations were not uh, representing the minorities on television. Mm -hmm. So while you have a show like Maya and Miguel or, or you have Dora, they're not really getting to the core of the cultural issues and they're not really getting specific to representing an ethnicity. Um, as an example, we took Mixed Nuts to a very large corporation to pitch them the idea to raise money for it. And this was a, an entertainment company. And they said, well, we really like the idea, but why don't we take Jay, and instead of Jay being Korean, we'll make him Asian. You know, because that'll hit a larger demographic. And we, we thought, well, that's exactly what's wrong with mm -hmm. what's on television right now, is that you're trying to think of it as demographics, as opposed to, well, maybe the Korean holiday of Thanksgiving is really interesting. So why don't we explore that? And Americans would be interested in that, and other people are interested in that. So while we're learning and teaching kids something, uh, we're also getting the benefit of the entertainment value. Part of the problem, I think, is in the creation uh, and development of stories. We don't have enough diverse people writing the stories and representing typical issues that are happening every day in American homes. Um, it's sort of the same thing with the Winning Women program. You know, you want to have enough women represented in, in corporations so that um, you know, it's sort of well balanced. That's exactly what we're getting in the entertainment and media. I mean, if you turn on the television right now, there's just not enough color on television mm -hmm. in terms of representing all the different shades of, uh, of people that are living in this country. Um, so that, that's definitely our mission and that's where our sweet spot is. Um, and with Mixed Nuts, uh, we're definitely carving out that space. Some of it was our own funding, so uh -huh. we had um, Labor and Kind, we also had our own initial investment in the firm, and uh, uh, some of the money came from foundations that were believed in the cultural value and the social value of what we were doing. Because with these cartoons, obviously, we can reach a really large population, and it's a very scalable business mm -hmm. that has some social value attached to it. Um, so we raised that money and sort of went blind and developed the show. Uh, we opened up our own animation studio in Vancouver, Canada, because oh. there are a lot of tax credits there and the animation talent is just superb. Uh, in fact, Pixar just opened up a studio there a few, a few months ago and they're doing their, shorts, their short uh, programs there. Uh, so, so we're in Vancouver with a large animation studio and developed and produced the show entirely on our own. And then we went out 
and showed it to PBS. Um, we have been able to reach over um, 26 different educational stations in, in the U.S. alone. Right now we're really excited. Um, uh, we're working on our next show, which is called 1001 Nights. It's the ancient tales. Um, it's better known here as Arabian Nights. And some of the stories you would know from um, the Arabian Nights are stories like Aladdin, Ali Baba and the Forty Thieves, Sinbad. Um, now there are 990 998 other stories that have never been animated and never been told. So we had the idea of making that into a TV series. Yeah. So every episode starts with Shahrzad, the famous storyteller, which has never been animated, um, and a situation in the Persian court where we open up with the kids. They get into a fight. Shahrzad comes in and she says, don't fight, learn to share. And she tells a story that's related to what's going on. And typically it'll be a story from A Thousand and One Nights. Um, and we try and infuse a lot of comedy into it. So that show we're producing right now in Vancouver. We're all about all kinds of products and all ways of reaching children. Uh -huh. We're looking at, uh, for example, iPhone apps right now. iPhone is huge. Um, there's the passback, what we call the passback in the industry, which is a parent is driving their kid around and they have their iPhone and they pass it back to the <laughs> child to keep them entertained. Um, and that could be uh, educational games. Uh, it could just be uh, interaction with the characters from the show. Um, and we also have an online presence, obviously, now. That's a huge, huge uh, play for us. We have educational games that feature the characters. Um, we have an extended online experience with those characters in the shape of downloads and wallpaper and coloring sheets and all kinds of goodies um, so that uh, we can reach our audience directly. We have uh, a, an online distribution platform that we're building right now called Osnaz.com. And the idea with Osnaz is while we're reach reaching these immigrant families that are interested in mixed nuts, um, they might be interested in, in other cultural and language um, teaching tools for their kids. So now we're not just producing the content ourselves and selling it, we're also procuring other content from other producers that are all about teaching culture and teaching language. Yeah. And that site is specifically you know, Korean, Chinese, Iranian, Hindi, it's divided up by language. Um, so that if a, if a parent is interested in their child watching a program in Hindi, let's say, in different age groups, they can do that. And they can grow up bi bilingual, which is happening a lot now um, in this world, not just in North America. People are more and more diverse, more and more mixed up. Families are from two different countries or two different races. And it's becoming more and more important to embrace those values and to make the child feel that both of those cultures are important and they should embrace that. Thank <laughs> you.